Hey, you're here. Me too. Good timing. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And today is Tuesday. It's October 29th. Now, normally we like to take a look at a hot penny stock on this show. I'm a day trader. I trade penny stocks every day. Stocks under five bucks. And I'm always looking for one that has potential to make us money. And then I share it with you. Well, I do this every day over at Penny Boys. I look for hot stocks and share them with anybody and everybody that shows up on our free members page. Penny Boys is an educational discord. We help people learn how to trade, whatever it is you want to do. And we have a free members page where you can kind of test us. You can jump on in here and trade with us. We trade all day in here. Now, you know I'm a day trader, right? I like to get in and out of stocks in one day, sometimes a few days. Well, we day trade over here, but we do even shorter trades. We do what we call scalping. We're getting into a stock and getting out in a matter of minutes, maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes, but we're not in very long. We are trading probable moves, and I'm going to explain all that to you. So what I'm going to do is bring you on over here to Penny Boys, where we are getting busy with the whizzy every single day. Yeah, that's me. So the first thing that starts up in the morning is me putting out news. From 7.20 to 9.30 in the morning, I am running around Twitter and my Discord group posting all the news and the hot runners I can find. I am bringing news over here on a separate page, uh, news by Jersey or something like that, but I'm also posting hot charts. I'm finding hot charts that are taking gains, that are going up and moving. I'm giving you uh, scans of the Biggest movers on the charts, whether that be by price or by volume. So you're getting a lot of information over here pre-market. Now, what's funny is most of these charts that I'm showing people pre-market, most of them are not the ones we end up playing through the day. Most of them, as soon as the bell hits, start to fall and they just never recover. Now, the key ingredient to any of the stocks we're playing is volume. Volume, volume, volume. We want lots of volume. We don't want to be inner city at a traffic light watching traffic stop and go, stop and go. Uh-uh. We want to be on the expressway. We don't want that traffic slowing down because it's easy to know where the, the price is going to go if it's moving. So what I want to do here is show you some of the stocks we were looking at today. I got to be cautious here, folks. Last week when I made this video, I went like an hour and 50 minutes and didn't realize it, and I had to cut over an hour out of that video, which wasn't easy because I've got to determine what's not important. And considering I said it all, I thought it was all important. So we're going to try to keep this one under 30 minutes. So there's no way we can cover everything we did today. No way. So I've tried to pick some of the things I can share with you. The first thing I want to do, though, is let you know when you come here, we let you know what we're doing so that we're all on the same page. And I do repeat this over and over again through the day because you never know who's come in and who's gone out, who's not aware of what exactly it is we're doing. And this right here is exactly what we're doing. We are scalping fast trades between supports and resistances. This is just an example I put up so everybody can see it and understand. These yellow lines on the chart, they're yellow for me. These horizontal straight lines are supports and resistances that we draw on the charts. These come from where the price changes direction, where it bounces. Let's say we've got a dollar and the price comes up to a dollar, hits it and falls back. Comes up to a dollar, goes over it a little bit, then falls back. Then it finally breaks through, climbs up, falls down to the dollar and bounces, boink, back up. Falls down to a dollar, comes under it a little bit and then bounces again. Well, that one dollar is a very unique point on the chart. She keeps hitting it and changing directions. So we call that a support when she's on top of it and a resistance when she's underneath it. Think of them as speed bumps on the road. What do you do when you approach a speed bump in a car? You slow down. And what do you do when you get over the speed bump? You speed up. And from... The other side of the speed bump to the next speed bump, you normally drive one consistent speed, a probable move. And that's what we're doing here. We're getting in just over the speed bump. We get in just over it, never on the support of resistance. You don't get out or in on the support of resistance. Over the speed bump is where we get in. And then we get out just before the next speed bump. 
not on it, just before it. And that is a probable move. Now, for every thousand shares you buy of any stock at any price, when the price moves a penny, you made $10. You buy 500 shares of any stock at any price, you make $5 for every penny it moves. So you start calculating how many pennies are between each one. You got eight pennies there, that could be $40 to $80. And you do this over and over again. And at the end of the day, you add up all of those small gains and you've got yourself three, four, five hundred dollars $500. Now, we plan these trades, folks. You see what you're looking at. Once we have our supports and resistances, we determine what our price to get in is, what our price to get out is, and an emergency exit underneath where you get in. Basically the same point you would sell, but underneath where you got in, that is your stop loss. We have all these prices set up first, where we're going to get out when things go good, what we're going to pay to get in and what we're going to sell at if the price starts to fall. And these are automatic standing orders. They all go in at the same time. So you don't have to make any decisions during the trade. So nobody should ever ask me, should I sell now? You've already got your sell prices. If it falls, you sell here. If it climbs, you sell there. You've already made these decisions. So your emotions don't get involved. You don't have to panic and make a decision in the heat of the moment and do the wrong thing. Or when it starts to fall, start hoping it's going to bounce back as it keeps going further and further down, stealing your money. So we always, always use stop losses. We also always, always, always take the gains. This is a golden rule, folks. Always, always sell at the target. You don't have to sell everything. It is not an all or nothing decision. When you approach your sell point, you don't have to sell 100%. You don't have to say, nah, I'm going to carry it on to the next one. You could do this. You approach your very first target. You've got 100% of your stock. Sell half of it right there underneath that support. Carry the other 50% up. If it looks like it's going to keep running, you don't want to get out at 100%. You could be taking more gains. So sell 50%, let 50% ride. When it gets to the next target, sell again sell half. Now you got 25% still running because the chart looks strong. Sell at the next target. And if it still looks like it's ready to run, sell half there and take 12.5% of your shares up to the next target. Think of each one of these sell points as a payday. Would you ever pass up a payday and wait till next week to get your check? Heck no. Folks, take your paydays, lock that money in your pocket. So if anything abruptly changes and you're caught off guard, they didn't take your money. You had it in your pocket where it was safe. So once everybody knows what's going on, the bell rings. The first thing we do is a whole lot of nothing. Well, not really nothing, but we're not jumping into trades. No. You know, it's funny. A lot of people treat trading like a race. As soon as that bell goes off, they panic. They feel they need to be in a stock right now. Why? <laughs> you can get into a stock any time of day and make a trade and pull out and get your gains. Smartest thing to do is wait 10, 15 minutes, see where their stocks are going. Give them a chance to start moving so we can predict where they're going to go. Once they start moving, I'm looking for hot charts. I'm using a scanner. I use this scanner over here. Uh, Stock Titan. This is a momentum scanner. It'll show you up here how many hot stocks are running and how many times they've been alerted. Or you can look at them individually down here at the bottom. I also use my uh, charts. Of course I do. I bring up my scans over here and I look at volume. I look at price. And all I do is just keep bringing up my charts like that. And I can see right there what's going on in a heartbeat. And what I'm looking for really is not just climb. I am looking for, <laughs> let me get back to my page. I'm looking for volume. Climb comes with volatility. Volatility comes with volume. If you don't have volume, you're not going to get movement like you want. So as soon as the volume starts dwindling away on a stock, we just stop looking at that stock. We don't hang around. We're not marrying it. It's not a girlfriend. We just go find another hot stock that's got volume and start playing that. So stocks start coming in. I'm bringing in information. We are looking at stocks. This is one we did play. Glick, ticker G-L-Y-C. I told him it was ready to break out over the uh, 200 haul. 
You see the 200-day MA here? We had this huge giant run. She went from 15 cents to 50 cents. 330% run right there. She started to dribble down. When the bell came, she dropped hard right to her 200. But she is between both 200s. Now, breaking out over either 200 is a big deal because they are equal in power, equal in authority. So we were waiting for this to break up over this 200 hall, which I have blue when it's rising, purple when it's falling. And when you have your price in the middle of both 200s and the 200s are closing in like that, it's like a tube of toothpaste. It's getting squeezed and it's going to pop. It is going to pop. And the best way to know where it's going to pop is one, Check out your volume. Look at all that volume we had down there. Ton of volume. And then look at your oscillators. And it really doesn't matter what you're using. PPO, MACD, RSI, ADX, what, whatever you're using. In 99% of the cases, if that oscillator is climbing, you've got a good thing going on. So if all your oscillators are climbing, when you have a setup like this, chances are she's going to squeeze out of the tube and jump up. Now, what I like to do here, I tell people this, use the search bar. This is going to bring up all of the comments, all of the plays. We give you entries. We give you targets so that you know what you're shooting for. Now, we don't do this on every stock. There's just too many stocks. And to be honest, a lot of these stocks start running so fast that I can't get in a entry for the next entry because it's moving so quick. So I got to get ahead of it. And I jump up to another support and resistance and I grab that one and I'll give you three of them in a row. Three entries, three exits. And the great thing about this is you never have to update these. Supports and resistances never change, folks. They are permanent forever and ever and ever. Now, we're going to get back to Glick, but here's some of the stocks we were looking at. BKYI, we did play that one. BITF, I put it up to show people we didn't have any takers on that one. That's okay. So I needed to get some supports and resistances for Glick, and we got them right there. Now, these white ones you're seeing here, matter of fact, let's jump on over to my chart to see this. Let's bring up the full chart. I will collapse this. And let's bring up Glick, ticker GLYC. So you can see she was going flat for a real long time. We had that huge jump of 330%, and then she fell, come down through this strong support, and she started to climb. Now, what you're looking at here is a yellow line, which is a support I drew in, and then you've got the white lines, which come from a Fibonacci. There you go. I had to go back six months. We had this huge drop back here. Now, I could only get supports and resistances up until this spot right here. That's as high as I could go. After that, where am I going to get supports and resistances out of this? I don't know where the price stopped and bounced. It doesn't look like it did anywhere. So what we use is a Fibonacci. The Fibonacci is a tool over here that if you poke the top of your Big drop or a big surge, but always start at the top, poke it there, come down to the bottom and poke it there. What you get are these Fibonacci's. Fibonacci numbers are magic numbers that we don't understand why they work, but they work. And this is a science that is in nature. It's in our seashells, in hurricanes, in the creation of galaxies. It's a science we use to control certain aspects of nature. And somebody decided to bring it into finances, and it works. And these are supports and resistances that the price is going to respect and we can trade on. Now, as you'll notice, the bottom gap is real big and the top gap is real big. So normally you have to come back and put some supports and resistances in those areas. So this is what we were playing. We were jumping from one support to the next one. That was one play right there. When she fell back down, we could get back in again right down there and then just climb up. So there was two trades here, one, two, and then she just went sideways and we didn't look at her anymore that day. And that's okay. We're not looking for a stock to marry. We just want to get into something that is moving right now and get out before it quits moving. Now we've got lots of stocks that we could talk about. V-SIG, that was another one we considered, but we did not play it. She cooled down. As you can see, we are early. This is 10 in the morning. It's only a half hour into it. Uh, this is the whole reason we invite you over here, folks. 
while you're trading with us, you're asking questions. We're answering your questions, whatever your questions may be. Now, I can't answer them all, but we've got team members over here. Mad Maverick, Jay, Ethan, Swinging Bull, uh, Porterhouse, uh, Top, who isn't part of the team, but he is over here trading all the time. He is great. They will answer our questions for us. They pop in and out, back and forth. And if we can find areas in your trading that need help, we are here to help you. So we actually have coaching. You can get coaches that do what it is you're looking for, and you can hire them to train you personally. They will spend time with you and help you do exactly what it is you need to do. And if you're not even sure what it is you need to do, they'll help you figure that out too. And that is the primary reason we've brought you over here, so that we can find your weaknesses and strengthen you. We're not going to charge you for every answer. Wouldn't that be funny? No, we're going to give you a lot of answers. But some things do require one-on-one -on -one attention, and we're glad to help you with those. So again, you can see I repeated that information. SoFi was a stock that took a jump pre-market, but wow, look at that fall. But then we started to watch it because there was a chance she could bounce off of this support right here. She could come back up. But as I recall, we never came back to this one. Now, there was a stock I wanted to share here with you. Well, we can look at UAVS. We did trade UAVS today. She was hot early in the day, then she cooled off, and then she got hot again. Let me get over here and we'll get this up. UAVS. So this is how it started right here. Let me make this really big. There you go. Can you see that? Sure you can. <laughs> so she was going sideways, wasn't doing anything. She was locked in between these two supports in a channel, just going sideways. And then at the bell, she took a dip down to her 200 day MA here and she took a bounce and she went through one, two, three, breaking four supports. That is four separate plays or you could get in once and sell half and then sell another half, sell another half, and you could have made some good money here. Now, look at our oscillators down at the bottom, folks. Lots of volume, right? That's the first thing we want to see. We have to have volume, and I don't want it red. I really do want green. But red and green mixed is okay. That's volatility. That's giving you your bounces. And every drop is a possible opportunity to get back in and ride it back up. But look down here at our PPO, that's climbing. Our MACD is climbing with green bars accumulating. Our RSI is in the overbought. It is over 70 in the red. And that's great. That's what I want to see, folks. A lot of people are afraid to get into a stock in the overbought because it sounds bad. It's overbought, like oversold. Well, it's not a bad thing if you're looking for heat. If you're looking for a trade that's on fire right now, that's what you want. That's what you need to see all the heat you can get. And the reason most people are afraid to get into a stock that's overbought is because it's going to come down. Well, yeah, everything sooner or later comes down, but how long is it going to be up there? Well, this was up there for half the day. Half the day it was up there. So we like all the heat. There is no such thing as too much heat, too much volume. We want as much as we can get. Now let's see what it looked like at the end of the day for us here. Let me bring this up. Ta-da. All right, so now we're looking at the end of the day. Ooh, look at that big run. So we had an entry here, and that looked to be going about 20 cents, folks, about 18 cents. This was a $180 play if you had bought 1,000 shares. If you bought 500, that would be about a $90 play right there. You would sell half of it here. And continue on. The next one looks like it went between, uh, that looks to be whew, about $160 on this play for 1,000 shares. $80 for 500 shares. That one's a lot less, but you can see each one of these are probable moves. She moves from one point to the next, one point to the next without a lot of hesitation. We had a drop here, gave us another entry, another sell. And she just kept going. So we went from 260 to 365 here. Then she fell down. And at the end of the day here, she started to get some momentum again. And we were watching her. But as you can see, she just didn't break away the way we were hoping. Now, there is one stock here I want to bring to your attention. I'm not quite sure where it's at here. Uh, Twig is what I wanted to show you. TWG.
Now, we actually didn't play this stock today, but it is a stock of interest. So I want to show this to you. Twig. Let's see right there. All right, let's bring up the whole post. Somebody asked me about Twig. Was Twig really at $13 last week? Did they have a split or something? Well, it's understandable. No, they didn't have a split. So Twig was running. She had climbed from, let's go back an hour. She was back here on top of her 200 at about $1.90. And it was here on the 11th, she started to make a push. She jumped from uh, about two bucks up to, holy cow, $8.30 in one day, folks. 350, 400% gains. Pulled back to her 50 day and she was bouncing on that all the way up until she hit this high of 1350. Then we had this big bad drop from 1350 down to 46 cents. Echo stop. <laughs> that was my timer. I've already gone long enough. I'm going to take a few more minutes here. I'm not going to keep you all day. Now, the reason this dropped is very, very important, folks. They had bad news. The CEO resigned abruptly. He had a disagreement with the board of directors on the direction of the company. So he just upped and quit. There was no fundamental changes. They didn't apply for bankruptcy. There's nothing bad. They're not going down to the OTC or anything. Nothing like that. We just had the CEO resign under negative conditions. And it dropped from that $13.50 down to $0.50 cents roughly. $13. And it's been going sideways ever since. So many, many, many people expect this to come back. There's no reason for it to have fallen that far. But the question is, when she was back here at a buck ninety, what made her jump to eight bucks? Was that a valid push? Did we actually get some value there? So we're back down to 50. We could at least expect to come back up here to, <laughs> to that $2.92 right there. But she could easily go past that and start to climb again. So what are we waiting for? Well, when I came down, I believe it was to the 15-minute chart, you can get an idea of what we're actually trying to do here. Again, we have the price between the two 200s. Our 200 haul this time is on the bottom. Our 200 MA is on the top. And look how flat that price is. Super duper flat. Now, I'm going to try to zoom in just on that price, but we're going to lose our MAs. So as you can see, there is activity there. It's not flat. She is actually dipping right now, falling, falling, falling. Let me back this out so we can get a full picture. But it is that breakout that we're waiting for. Again, the two 200s are squeezing, right? Anytime you see these two monster MAs coming together, that's a lot of strength. That's a lot of press power. This is already flat. Well, kind of flat. It's going to get squeezed again, folks. And with this drop the way it is, we're anticipating that it's going to pop up. Now, right now, most of the oscillators are pretty flat, too. There's not a lot going on right here. So we're watching this for a breakout. When is it going to happen? Well, when the 200 gets close to the price, the price may drop down to the 200 haul and springboard off of it. Spring right off of the 200 haul and go through all the MAs to and through the 200-day MA. So we could see a breakout on this in the next couple of days if you're paying attention to it. So all day we are sharing stocks. You're bringing me stocks. I'm bringing in stocks. We're looking at them. We're finding hot plays. We have people like Porterhouse. You see that bright green name? Anybody that has a bright green name is a team member here. You can ask them questions. You can trust them. They're here to help you. They will come here and do some trading. And they'll let you know what stocks are trading. And they're trading the same way we are. They're doing scalps. But we do get questions on swing trades. What's a good swing? Do you think this is a good swing? Where would you get out on this if I was swinging it? And we'll try to answer those best we can. But the fact of the matter is we have a page. <laughs> we have a room, a group for anything you want to do. Options, shorting, uh, aggressive trading, passive trading, long holds, whatever it is you want to do, we have information on it. Now, you can get the full boat. You can get everything by just going premium. 
We have premium just for a month. If you want to give it a whirl, we have it for three months. We have it for a year. And right now, I'm not quite sure where, where it is. Right now, we have a special going on. I can't remember what it is, but you're saving a lot of money. You're getting extra time. So you're going to want to check into it right now. But you get everything, folks. And this is really amazing because you have our professionals making watch lists. Watch lists for today. Watch lists for the week. Long watch lists. Watch lists for options. You have uh, coaching. You you have uh, alerts. I'm not the only one that gives alerts. We have all kinds of alerts. Alerts on when to get in, when to get out. Lots and lots of information. So I would consider us, folks, if you know me, you know that I don't BS. I don't hype stocks. I don't jerk you around. I just don't believe in any of that. I consider us a community. This is not a competition. We share information and that's what helps all of us. And that's all I do is share information. And I'm telling you folks, this is one heck of a site, Penny Boys. I've been with them over two years now and it is amazing what I have learned from them and what I've seen them do for other people. And we have proof in the pudding. You know, you're saying blah, blah, blah. Every Discord group says that. Well, come on over, folks. If you're serious about becoming a premium member and you want proof, we have team members that will show you their PLs, not just a couple trades over the last week or whatever. They will show you their profit and loss statements so you can see on a long term how well they've been trading. So I can't go through everything here, folks, but you know what you need to do is just come join us. We're open every day. We're open every night. <laughs> Honestly, you can go over to Penny Boys right now, free members page, and people are over there talking about stocks. They might talk about other stuff, but you will rarely ever see an argument. We don't talk politics. We don't talk gender. We don't talk anything that's going to cause problems. We're here to trade. And this is a great time for education. A lot of our other team members come in and just want to talk stocks like me, and they will answer your questions. So really, come on over to free members page right now, any time of the night, ask your question. Now, we're not always there. We got lives we're living too, so we're popping in and popping out. But drop your question in there. Somebody will find it. We'll tag you. We'll give you an answer, and hopefully I'll see you there tomorrow. Bring a hot stock. If not, we'll load you up. We'll set you up with some plays. And hopefully, hopefully I can put some money in your pocket multiple times in a day by planning our trades. We had one guy today. He was actually at his job. Not the best way to do it. He had 16 trades today. Short trades. He said most of his trades were about five minutes. And most of his trades were about $50. He had four losses. And he had 16 trades, which means he had 12 wins. And I do believe he said his largest loss was like $25. And that's the whole key here, folks. We limit our losses with our stop losses. And we know exactly where we're going to get out. We're taking our paydays. And when your losses, it takes three losses to equal what you're doing in gains. You have to lose three times before you're actually losing any money. Every win covers three losses. So we've got a great strategy over here, folks, and we want to share it with you. So come on over. Quit being a stranger. Come on over here and I'll teach you all sorts of stuff, folks. Because you know what I always say. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. <laughs> Thanks, folks. See you later.